What makes human, human? What defines consciousness or the soul? What is our purpose? If a tree falls in the woods, was it really a tree? What? Mm, exactly. We ponder life in the Talos Principle. We see the world as a mystery, a puzzle, because we've always been a species of problem solvers. The Talos Principle is a first-person puzzle game that's been widely compared to Portal, although the more I played, the more differences I found. But I think we can put our differences behind us. You are cast as the newly activated humanoid robot, tasked by the disembodied voice of Elohim with collecting sigils on your path to enlightenment. It is your purpose to seek these sigils, for thus you will serve the generations to come and attain eternal life. It starts out very serene, but also quite exciting. I mean, you're a new creation with an entire world made just for you. But cracks quickly begin to form. Painted messages speak of doubt and mistrust. Your surroundings occasionally buzz and flicker like a hologram glitch. And the library system is filled with eerie existentialist messages. And most importantly, there's an ominous tower which you've been strictly instructed not to climb. Yes, it's all very mysterious, isn't it? And I really liked the way that mystery unfurled. And can I just say, visually, this game is beautiful. Forests and gentle snowfall, burning deserts, ah, and castles. That cathedral was my favorite. And the lens flare, oh. The game allows you to pick the order of puzzles with three hubs containing numbered doorways. Through the doors are smallish maps with a few puzzles. Complete them and you'll get a Tetronimo sigil, which gives you access to later levels and equipment. There is much that you may learn in the halls of my temples, for there is much that you do not know. I more or less played in order, but I found the difficulty was all over the place. I'd go from completing three or four puzzles easily first time to spending half an hour on one, just pulling my hair out. Only then to follow it up with a few more easy ones. One could say that the existentialist questions are the real puzzles of the game. No, it's the puzzles. The puzzles are right there. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Still, something kept pulling me back in. I just get so irritated with the puzzle and walk away, only to come back in an hour desperate to finish it. If this trial seems impossible to overcome, have no fear. Return another time and the answer may reveal itself. I mean, I'd almost argue that the lack of hand-holding kind of mimics the idea of being a new creation, exploring a new world, and then just trying to find meaning in that. Yeah, maybe. I still think it's a bit of a cop-out, though. Yeah, I don't know. I think it adds context. And I liked the character of the game, the fact that it's always reminding you that nothing you see around you is real. You're a robot, but you feel like a human. But what makes us human? Just that human versus AI concept, I find that really interesting. I did enjoy arguing morals and consciousness with the library and channeling my inner robot. But dialogue options are ultimately limited and designed to make you contradict yourself by ignoring circumstances and gray areas. And then about two thirds of the way through, I just stopped having fun with the puzzles. I think they became tedious and unfair. Like when I was up to the last door and then I accidentally stood in the way of a laser beam and it locked me out with all my tools on the other side. Unlike the last of five doors, never has a reset been so sad. Oh, Bajo. Well, I had fun with those lasers, just trying to get all the angles just right. I, I think that was probably my favorite puzzle element. Yeah, I like that too, when I wasn't being locked out. And part of my frustration was just from impatience. I wanted to go up that tower. And the other part was because a lot of the solving just felt like busy work. We are the story, and the story tells us who we are. I quite liked squirreling away all the parts and methodically trying all of them, but you're right, after a while the solutions just got tired and were either too silly or too obvious. And some puzzles are essentially repeats, which makes it feel like they just ran out of ideas. And then sometimes it'd be something included like a fan that's completely irrelevant to solving the puzzle. Apparently the game is full of Easter eggs, so maybe they're a part of that. They still felt like red herrings though. Yeah, well overall I think they've been quite ambitious and unique with their approach, especially with regards to the story, which I definitely appreciated. I mean, sure, maybe the attempts at highbrow debate sometimes fell flat, 
But I thought it was great how they managed to weave in questions of humanism, purpose, faith, and existentialism. Plus, there were quite a few moments that I felt genuinely moved, and that's worth something, I think. Yeah, it's just a shame that the endings aren't that great. I've played through two out of three of them, and you just see them coming a mile off. So unfortunately for me, this is predominantly a puzzle game, and the puzzles aren't that well polished, so that's a problem. I disagree. I quite liked the puzzles and I thought the themes were really innovative. Well, I'm going to give it two stars. It's three and a half from me. It's not a comforting way of thinking about the world, but I'd rather face the truth than lie to myself. And now here is Mr Goose with the news.